Hey, the Grand Alive, welcome to Coffee with Will, brought to you by Grand Run Hospital, Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Anything Too Digital, EONI, and Les Schwab Tire Center. And I'm here today with Kelsey McDaniel, who is the Union County District Attorney, attorney currently, and is also the incumbent candidate for that position. And she is here today to talk with me a little bit about herself, her passion, and her uh, run to stay in the position. So thank you, Kelsey, for joining me here today on Coffee with Will. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about I me? Mean, you are a very accomplished um, legal worker. You have worked in so many different areas and done so many different things, bringing you here to being the Union, Union County District Attorney. Her resume is like this long. It's really long. I've read it and it's really impressive. So tell me the short version. What brought you here to being in Union County, being our District Attorney? Well, um, my husband and I moved here in 2010 from Hepner. I was the deputy district attorney there, and oh. actually the job brought me here. Oh. Uh, I was hired as a deputy DA in 2010 here, and then became the elected DA in 2014. Wow. So we came actually for the job. <laughs> very cool. Now, you actually live in North Powder, and I don't have very many guests very often from North Powder. I'm just curious, why did you choose North Powder? Uh, my husband's family has a long roots and long history there. Uh, so we're, we actually live in a home that's been in his family for three generations. Oh, wow. So um, it was a natural fit for us. Uh, we have a young daughter and it's a really wonderful community. Wow, very cool. Now, you have, since you've been here as the district attorney, you've really gone above and beyond in a lot of ways. You've been on many committees, you've been on many different uh, organizations. You're, I think you're a member of the Rotary Club, correct? I am. Um, why have you thrown yourself in like that? Well, I always tell people that I've always wanted to be a prosecutor. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to be a district attorney. And I tell people, this is what I want to do and where we want to do it. Hmm. Um, this is a great community. It's kind of um, this hidden gem that in Eastern Oregon, we just love it. It's big enough that you can go out for dinner and partake in all of the different artistic activities um, and events that Union County has, but it's also rural enough that you can escape to the mountains and go fishing and hiking. And um, it's got the best of everything yeah. on top of the fact that it's just got really great people. Yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful community. Granted, I see a lot of the bad things that happen here. Yeah. But the community itself restores my faith and I I think that that's an amazing thing that you can't replicate. And that's kind of an interesting aspect, you know, so you do see a lot of the sort of more, you know, unfortunate sides of Union County. How do you kind of deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it just a matter of kind of being like, okay, I'm gonna go see these good things? I mean, do you have a way that you kind of process through those things? Is that something that you have to deal with a lot? Or do you have just very clear boundaries between work and home? Well, I, I think of it in terms of nobody comes to the DA's office because they just want to see what's going on. <laughs> no one just drops no. in for a chat. No, nobody's <laughs> like, I wonder what they're up to on Wednesday. <laughs> People usually come to our office or meet with me or are preparing for something because something horrific has happened to them mm -hmm. in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so I take it as a huge honor and responsibility that I'm the person that's helping them through this process. Mm -hmm. And so if I can make it a little bit easier, a little less traumatic, a little bit um, more informative than I've done my job in helping them. And I think it's a true gift to be able to be that person to help them through that process in what's in all likelihood probably the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Yeah, that's very true. Now, what made you kind of want to go in a position and do a job that was so surrounded by misfortune? That's a good question. And you can kind of think about that. Like you don't have to necessarily like have an answer right off the top of your head. Like what was kind of the motivation? It's kind of like, you know, people who get involved in social work. It's it's a tough job, you know? It is. Like what kind of was your passion that made you move that direction? I decided, um, I'm one of those weird kids that I decided what I wanted to do when I was really young. I was a <laughs> sixth grader when I decided I wanted to be a prosecutor. Wow. Um, I had learned about the O.J. Simpson trial oh. and Marsha Clark. And I saw that 
Um, the prosecutor was the person who was always helping the family. The prosecutor was the one who was working with the family and really fighting for justice for the victims. Mm. And I knew I wanted to be a lawyer and I knew I wanted to be in trial. And that kind of gave me the idea of, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So wow. um, I didn't really ever have a plan B. That's what I've worked for my whole life. I started wow. working in my first prosecutor's office when I was 19. Wow. And I've worked in prosecutor's offices pretty much ever since. Um, in law school, I did a little bit of civil work um, in family law um, and, and domestic violence cases. But otherwise, I've been working in, in the prosecution field ever since. Wow. So you've been doing just, you decided in sixth grade that you wanted to be a prosecutor. Most people in sixth grade don't know what they want to eat for lunch that day. That's what I said. You know, I'm, I'm a weird kid who said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then I went and did it. Wow. That's very cool. So now that all being said, you've kind of taken a very, at least from reading your resume, um, you've taken a very sort of like you, a lot of your work has been oriented around sexual abuse, um, victim advocacy, um, domestic violence, working with people who have been victimized. And, you know, it's obviously something you enjoy. It's obviously something that you probably are good at. So is there a deeper reason why, or has this just been something that you've, you know, enjoyed working with people who are, like you said, in that really dark time of their lives and trying to help them? Um, I think it's some, I started out prosecuting domestic violence cases in Hepner. Mm. Um, so I got a lot of experience right off the bat. And I had a couple experiences there taking small children through the grand jury process where I learned um, the best way to do it, the easiest way to do it for them. Um, some little tricks that make it less stressful, less traumatic for them. Um, and really, I'm willing to put in the time. Um, mm. When we have a child or a victim of sexual assault that's going to have to testify or be involved in any sort of the court process, it takes a special person to put in a special amount of time, and I know what that takes. I huh. have a really good team of victim advocates, um, and we work really well together, and it takes a lot of time and effort, but it's so worth it. These are the cases that have the most vulnerable victims. They're the cases that have the most lasting effects, mm. and so they need to be given the highest priority. Wow. And you, so you did, you mentioned that on your website. You said children are the Union County's highest priority. I don't think it was even like a, one of the most highest priority. It's the highest priority. It should be. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Why do you think that? Why do you feel that passionate about children? Well, when we talk about the safety and health of the community, we have to look at the kids. Mm -hmm. um, especially in social work or in the criminal justice system, you can get in this cyclical pattern of having these families um, keep going through the system. If you can intervene and make a difference in a kid's life early on, you're not gonna have to deal with them later in an area of the law that you don't want to or you mm -hmm. shouldn't. Um, that's one of the reasons that we've started prevention projects um, with my office, CHD, and the Union County Safe Communities Coalition to try to reach all 7th graders in Union County to talk about the dangers of online bullying, sexting, um, victim advocacy, and, and positive relationships. Wow. So it's kind of sort of like a... I'm not going to say preventative, but it's, a, I mean, it is a little bit of a preventative thing of saying, look, reach out to these kids, intervene with these kids when they're young so that when they get old, they don't have to come visit you on a Wednesday afternoon. Exactly. <laughs> and if there's something that we can do to make a traumatic experience in childhood better going through the system, then they won't re-enter the system. Wow. And they will know because they have resources and a support network through my office, through myself, through my victim advocates, through our community partners. Um, they'll know that there's a safety net there to help them in terms of accessing counseling services, um, getting their questions answered, um, being able to be heard in the courtroom, yeah. and being able to work with their counselors, with Mount Emily Safe Center, Shelter from the Storm, to, to get them through that process. Wow. So you kind of see yourself as someone who has unique skills being able to work with people who are children, who are victims, and being able to help them through this messy part of their life. Yes, I think that and working with community partners are some of the most important things in this particular, in my job. Yeah. Um, a lot of my job is connecting people with the right resource or connecting yeah. them with the right person to get their problem solved or their question answered. 
Wow, very cool. Yeah, and you have mentioned that multiple times, and you've kind of had a, you, you really seem to be very outgoing about connecting and using community resources to sort of further the goals that are oriented around you as a district attorney. Talk, tell me a little bit about that. How have you actively done that, and how will you continue to do that if you will continue to be the DA? Well, one example that I would, I would talk about is um, our mental health court. Uh, mm. program. We've started a mental health court steering committee which brings all of the members of the community partnership to the table to talk about how we are using resources, what the best way to intervene is. We have a, a large population of individuals who come into the criminal justice system because of symptoms of their mental illness. Mm. So the community is expending resources to deal with these people but not necessarily addressing them in the context of the criminal court system. Hmm. So we have started, it's been a, a years long process to get this program up and running to try to intervene. And that includes the hospital, um, law enforcement, parole and probation, the jail staff, um, everyone at the table to talk about what the program should look like, um, what we need to make it successful, mm -hmm. um, and, and how to best serve our community based on Union County's needs. Very cool, very cool. So. Now this is the first time, and you and how many you've been the Union County DA for how many years? Four. Four years, and you know up until this point you've kind of been the the, the game. This has been you have been the game changer. Now we did have uh, Laura Eckstein in the studio a couple weeks ago. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about her, there her coffee with Will's uh, up on the Grand Alive. Now what a lot of times when you are running against somebody it kind of forces you to think a little bit about what your passion is what your core is what your roots are you know when we spend our lives we kind of get distracted we go here and there and here and we follow this thing but when we when we are re-upping we kind of have to think about what is my core have you had to think about that and if so what kind of conclusions have you come to well i've i've looked at the campaign as um, first of all, it has to come second to my responsibility and my job as district attorney. Yeah. I do carry an active caseload. I have um, multiple sexual assault measure 11 cases that are going to be set for trial or are set for trial yeah. um, during this time in the summer. Um, but I think it's an exciting opportunity to talk to the citizens, to talk to the community about some of the great things that we're doing, mm. like our prevention program with the youth conference for seventh graders, like our mental health court program that we're working on. We also have a pilot program to try to increase the restitution payments for victims of property crime mm. um, and some person crimes as well. Um, we're gonna be partnering with the Union County Chamber of Commerce and be rolling that out hopefully in the next few months. So it's a great opportunity for us to talk about law enforcement, some of the challenges and great mm -hmm. accomplishments that we've had in keeping our community safe. Very cool, very cool. Now, I keep coming back to this because I keep hearing it and it's, I, mean, it's, I think it's really very good. You keep talking about expanding more and more the, the network of people working toward these goals. Why is that important to you? Like the why, why is it so important that you continue to connect those dots? Well, I think there's, when somebody enters the criminal justice system, it, impact, it has a ripple effect for somebody's life. Mm -hmm. It has a ripple effect for their family, for the entities of the government that are involved, social services, et cetera. Um, it's important that we're all connected to make sure that we're handling it appropriately, that we're being aggressive when people are taking advantage of children, of vulnerable people, um, and that we're trying to address the needs if somebody has issues of addiction or mental illness, that we're appropriately approaching it as a team. Because mm. we are, as a community, we're a team huh. in terms of addressing the needs of a community. And that's what makes Union County so great, is that we have wonderful people trying to make a difference. Wow, very, very cool. Awesome. Well, I think we're kind of running out of time here, getting close to the end. Um, what does the future look like for you, both as Union County District Attorney, or both personally and as Union County District Attorney, if and when you win? Well, this is, as I said before, this is what I want to do, and this is where I want to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm honored to be in this position, and I'm excited to be talking to people about my job. I love my job, I love the people that I work with, and I love this community. It's mm. where my husband and I have chosen to raise our family, and this is where we want to be. Very cool, very cool. Well, 
Thank you so much for coming in and chatting with me, Kelsey. It was an absolute pleasure for thank you to you come for in here. Me. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, LaGrand Alive, for tuning in to Coffee with Will. Um, this show was brought to you by Grand Ron Hospital, Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Anything Too Digital, EONI, and Les Schwab Tire Center. Please be sure if you see the people that own or operate these businesses, be sure to thank them. We could not do these shows without them. They sponsor us, um, and they are great little local businesses. So. Thank you for tuning in and tune in next time for another Coffee with Will. I'm Will Bowman. We'll see you next time.